I've been bullish on RAG for a long time, but after the Gemini 1.5 news last week with the 1 to 10 million context window, and at the same time I saw this new Grok hardware that runs 500 tokens per second, I definitely think in context can be better for some LLM ops going forward. So today I want to take a look at using RAG versus the context window, so let's get started. First I just wanted to quickly go through what is a context window and what is RAG. So here we have a model that has a context window of 8k, so that's 8,000 tokens it can process. So we have our input tokens, so this can be like, let's say it's 6,000 tokens I put in here, and I follow up with the query, and we get some output tokens. So totally now we have 7,500 tokens, and you can see clearly that fits inside of our window, right? So everything here will be processed. You gotta remember that also the output tokens will count as your window, right? So when we query here, what is the name of the YouTube channel? You can see on the top here, the YouTube channel All About AI. And you can see we get back here, the name of the YouTube channel is All About AI because it has that in context here, right? But what happens when we move over here now to the other model? It's the same, but we put in like 10,000 tokens. So what I try to showcase here is that this red part here now will get outside the window right because we put in too many tokens into the input and this top part the first tokens we put in will not be counted right so this is not included in context and when we follow up then with what is the name of the youtube channel the model can't really find the name because it slid out of the context window so it doesn't have any knowledge about the YouTube channel name is all about AI. And you can see when we add this up, we end up in 11,500 tokens. And that's kind of way outside the model context window. And if you are calling the API with too many input tokens, you will most likely just get an error message back. So this is something you gotta remember when we are talking about context window, right? So if you put in too much, it can slide outside the scope of the model, right? And this is the kind of problem RAG tries to solve, right? So uh, I just wanted to try to explain it pretty simple here. So let's say we have the same text here. So these were our input tokens from the previous window. So what we can do with our context is use a model to turn it into vector embeddings. And these embeddings we can then again store in a database. So when we use our user query here, uh, what is the name of the YouTube channel? We also turn that, of course, into an embedding. And then we can compare the embedded user query to the embedded text to kind of find the closest match. And when we find out the closest match, we can return that chunk of text into our prompt again. So here we kind of found the YouTube channel, all about the AI. That was kind of closest because we have YouTube channel here. We found YouTube channel in the text embeddings. We return that into our prompt and we can query again. What is the name of the YouTube channel? And now the model can answer, right? So the name of the YouTube channel is all about AI. So it answers the user's query with the fetch context. So this is kind of a hack to try to solve the context window problem. If we always could bring some very relevant chunk of text uh, that matches our query, we could always get a good answer. But of course, this brings other problems. We have a separate system that has to work well too. And it's a bit more technical than just using the context window. So it has its pros and cons, of course, but uh, the speed can be higher, the inference time can be lower, the price can be lower, I think. But we're going to take a look at that soon. So hopefully you kind of understand how RAG works. But of course, this is very a simplified version, of course. So the reason kind of I changed my mind a bit about RAG versus in context lately, as I've seen a lot of these posts here on Reddit and on X. So Gemini 1.5 Pro is still under hype. I upload that an entire code base directly from GitHub and all of its issues. Not only was it able to understand the entire code base, it identified the most urgent issue and implemented a fix. This changes everything. If we look here, you can see there are very good responses here. And remember, this is the 1.5 Pro version, so it's not the Ultra version. And you can see potential fixes. So I'm really hyped you can upload like a full code base. It's different that having it in RAG. Uh, I have a few examples of this because it gets the full context right. That's a bit different than picking out what you think is most relevant. But of course I'm no RAG expert. I'm sure there are some ways you can do this too with RAG but uh, uh, the results I've seen so far uh, with Gemini 1.5 Pro seems very promising. But of course using a full context window, let's say 1 million tokens, brings on a lot of uh, 
inference time, as we have seen in the Google examples. But then I saw this from Grok here, so you can actually try this out for yourself now at grok.com. They have a new hardware system, at called something like an LPU or something. So this is Mistral, uh, Mistral 8x7b. So it's we run like right on advanced snake game in Python. Uh, yeah, it's a lot of requests here, so it's gonna take a time before we get our queue. But it runs at lightning speed. It runs like 500 tokens per second, right? So you can kind of see how fast this is. 518 tokens per second. And if you can kind of combine that kind of speed with this kind of model type, we are really moving the boundaries, I think. Uh, of course, I understand that we won't get 518 tokens running in the big Gemini model, but if we can get like 100 tokens per second, that would also change a lot, right? And of course, price is very important here. So if you use the full context as an input, you will of course have to pay more per token. So I saw this post here, someone posted like, this is why Rag is here to stay, because like uh, you pay 0.005 per call, you only pick out what uh, is relevant, right? But if you use Gemini 1.4, 1 million tokens, you pay half a dollar per call, and it's gonna be very expensive. Uh, but there have been some speculations that Gemini 1.5 will be like 20 times cheaper than GPT-4. Uh, let's say Gemini 1.5 is 0, 0, 0, 0, 5 per million tokens or per thousand tokens, I don't know, but uh, per call, I guess. And that is kind of the same price here. Uh, of course, we're going to fetch less tokens, but if it's per call, we all expect prices to go down. We expect like compute to get cheaper and prices to go down. So that might not mean so much uh, in the future, right? If we think a bit ahead, this not might this not even have to be relevant if it gets low enough. It doesn't really matter if you save like one dollar uh, every ten million tokens or something. I think like uh, if the prices come for far enough down, uh, yeah, I think we can start using in context for everything if we have the inference to back it up, of course. So now I kind of want to run some examples of where you can kind of see the differences between using RAG and using in context. Uh, I lined up a few examples here. Uh, you can kind of see the strengths of RAG and kind of the strengths of in context. So we have this text here uh, that is basically, it's a video um, about um, Gemini 1.0 Pro. Uh, I just transcribed and I turned it into uh, just a text file. Then I have this uh, script here that just you're gonna run GPT 3.5 Turbo and we're gonna put in the query what does this text mean right five bullet points but here we kind of feed the full text in context so here we can see our text file is gonna be fed here before we ask our query and on the other side we're gonna do the same with rag we're gonna run GPT 3.5 Turbo we're gonna turn this text file into chunks of 500 and then we're gonna try to call and use the same query. So let's test this out. So let's do what does this text mean? Write five bullet points. So you can see it was pretty quick. Uh, discusses task of finding special imprint and passcode. It mentions repeat certain characters. Uh, yeah, it's not too good because the question here was kind of bad. What does this text mean? Write five bullet points. It's not really a ragged optimized question, right? But let's try this now just for comparison and see what this brings us when we have the full context, right? Okay, so of course you can see that the rag was pretty quick. I guess this, ah, it didn't take that long. Uh, so you can see, yeah, the answers here is much better. So the text discusses unveiling a 1.5 Pro, uh, demonstrates exceptional capabilities, understanding processing vast amounts of text. Yeah, so this is what we want, right? Uh, you can kind of see the differences here, but that is kind of playing on the strength of in context and kind of the weaknesses of rag So that's let's try to change the input a bit and Show you what kind of I think is good use of rag right? So now let's ask what is the size of the context window in Gemini 1.5 Pro? The context window size in 1.1 starts at standard 128 and go up to 1 million tokens. Okay, that's a pretty good answer. That was pretty quick. Now let's just do the same with uh, the in context one. Yeah, I would say 3.5 is pretty quick too. The answer here is a bit better, so it goes to up 
1 million tokens. The highest tier is mentioned up to 10 million tokens, but it's unclear how... Yeah, the answer is a bit better here, I think. But again, it's much cheaper to just run this uh, uh, with RAG. So it kind of used the context window, I guess, as a keyword and Gemini 1.5 Pro. And kind of picked out the relevant text here and just fetched that into context. But here we kind of used the full context. Uh, and you saw with GP3.5 Turbo, the answer was pretty quick. And I would say this answer is a bit better, right? And of course, we haven't talked about the multimodal features of Gemini 1.5 Pro. Here you can see they upload a 44 minute long video into context. And that translates to 696,000 tokens. And they can kind of pretty accurately ask for kind of a moment in the video when something happens. And you get this time code back. I haven't looked too much into it, but I think RAG has some kind of implementation where you can upload images and stuff, but I don't think I've seen anything about video yet. But I'm sure that we come, but uh, for now I think Gemini 1.5 Pro uh, is a bit ahead in this aspect. But I still think RAG has some great use cases, and kind of what I'm thinking about is just document uh, lookup. Let's say you have like hundreds of thousands of documents you kind of want to index, and this could save you a lot of time if you have kind of the key phrases you want to put in and you know kind of what you want to search for. But you don't need kind of the full context to get some reasoning over it. But you just want to look up that document and get some information back. And I think RAG is perfect for that because when once you have embedded it, you kind of have it stored there. You don't have to, yeah, what can I say, put it into context each time. So I think RAG definitely has uh, a future in this kind of space right but i'm kind of more and more leaning towards uh, uploading like when you have a very high impact kind of task just maybe like a code base or something uploading every single token into context uh, i think you could get better results doing that but uh, of course uh, like i said previous i'm no rag expert but kind of my intuition is that if you can put every single token in context and we don't get this uh, loss in the middle it looks like Google has kind of fixed that. Uh, then I think, of course, in context is better for like highly critical things like uh, code and stuff. But of course, I think RAG still has a big part to play here. But personally, I'm kind of more excited for this uh, context thing we have seen with Gemini 1.5 now up to 10 million. That is just crazy, right? I don't know. I just feel more comfortable knowing that every single token I have put into context is gonna be included when we use the language models to process our query, right? Here, I'm not so sure what is actually gonna be put into the prompt. I guess you could print it out and kind of see for yourself, but I just feel more confident. Like, uh, if I put the whole code base into this context, I know everything is there, right? And like I said, if we don't have this loss that we have seen in the middle, uh, yeah, that could be great and it could be like a leap forward, I think. So it's going to be really exciting to see what kind of response OpenAI is going to have for this. Are they going to bring out like a 1 million token window? I'm not sure. We'll just have to wait and see. But for now, I think this is a big step for Google. And uh, yeah, a lot of excitement around this I see on like X and Reddit and stuff. So that's pretty cool. But yeah, that was what I had for today. So thank you for tuning in and have a great day. And hopefully I'll see you again on Sunday.